Hello everyone, welcome to the video on GPAT 2022 paper answer explanation series. In this series, I will be explaining all the GPAT questions in part wise. In this video, I will explain about pharmacology questions. 10 questions I will be giving explanation. Now, this is my YouTube video. If you like the video content, do subscribe and share. I have uploaded 200 videos and I, my subscribers are more than 4,500. Get into the topic. Now, see. Tendon rupture or tendonitis of Achilles tendon is an adverse reaction of. Understand this word. See, tendonitis, inflammation of tendon. That is what results in tendon rupture. And this is the adverse reaction of fluoroquinolins. Now, tetracyclines, tetracyclines can chelate with polyvalent cations. Polyvalent cations like calcium, aluminum and all. So, this combination may result in complex formation. Now, calcium is present in our bones and teeth. So, tetracycline may cause adverse effects related to this complex formation. So, enamel development will not be there and bone growth may not be there. That is the reason why tetracycline should not be given to young children. Now, cephalosporins very common adverse effects are nausea, emesis and diarrhea. In case of aminoglycosides, you have adverse effects like ototoxicity. Ototoxicity, nephrotoxicity and neurotoxicity. Neurons will also get damaged. Especially neurotoxicity is related to neuromuscular blockade. So these are all the adverse effects of aminoglycosides. So the question is about tendon rupture and tendonitis and the answer is this option, fluoroquinolones. Moving to the next one. Now look at this. Match list 1 with list 2 with their mechanism of action. Now see, DPP4 inhibitors, this is dipeptidyl peptidase, dipeptidyl peptidase 4. This is an enzyme which metabolizes incretins. Incretins are insulin secretogogues. So when you inhibit that enzyme, what happens? Incretin levels increases and that increases insulin secretion and this is used to treat diabetes mellitus. So all these drugs are anti-diabetic or hypoglycemic agents. Now, Dipeptidyl peptidase inhibitor is all gliptins, tenegliptin, tenegliptin, all gliptins are dipeptidyl peptidase inhibitors. Now, potassium ATP channel blocker. See, see, while answering this kind of matching questions, we know that A matches with 4. So, you need to see the options wherein you have A is with 4. These two options wherein A matches with 4. Now, the next one, B. Potassium ATP channel blockers are sulfonyl ureas, glibenclamide, glimiparide, all of them. So, B matches with 3. What do you have? This must be our answer. Without looking the other two, you can save the time like this. So, this is how you need to understand the match the following questions and answer it. Let us see the remaining thing. The next one is paroxysome proliferating activating receptor gamma activator. They are pioglitazone and raciclutazone. See, the C is 2, 1. Now, the D adenine monophosphate K activator is metformin. So, this is. So, D is 1. So, this is the option. Again, you need to develop such kind of techniques to save the time. So, so these two, the matching combination is only you know and then you can easily, you can immediately write the option as option this one. Okay. Moving to the next one. Now, again, a similar kind of question. See, we, we need to match list 1 with list 2. So, this is about clinical trials. Clinical trials. Now, let us understand what all the things are given. See, the first one is phase 0. Most of the time we all read with phase 1, but there is something called as phase 0 which is related to micro dosing. So, B goes with Q. Again, apply the same technique. So, B goes with Q, only these two options are there. So, remaining two are not correct. Now, let us understand. Then phase 1. What, what do you see in phase 1? Phase 1 starts with the first human clinical dose. So, A goes with R. So, see, both for both of them, both the options are given. So, you are forced to go with the th next one. Now, next phase 3. Phase 3 is given in C option. Phase 3 is multicentric trials and phase 4 is post-marketing surveillance, D is P. So, C is as D is P. See, remember, most of the students will be knowing about phase 4 as post-marketing surveillance. Look at the options. Among all of them, only one has got this post-marketing surveillance option. So, this must be the true answer. This must be the right answer. 
So understand the match the following questions. If you know one correctly, if you are fortunate enough to get options like this, you will save time and immediately get the answer. Even though you don't know about uh, micro dosing like uh, phase zero and all, if you know post marketing surveillance, you can definitely get correct answer for this kind of questions. Moving to the next one. Now, which of the following is a malignant type tumor? Now, tumors are two types, benign and malignant. Malignant is cancerous tumor, benign is non-cancerous. This is what is the concept you need to understand. Now, lipoma is benign one, a lipid adipose accumulation. Adenoma is also a benign one. Now, osteoma is also a benign bone growth. Now, melanoma is a type of skin cancer. So, this is a type of malignant type of tumor. So, option, this one is correct. Moving to the next one. Now, when RBCs are kept in isotonic sodium chloride solution, what happens? See, in GPAT, the answer is given as all the, uh, all, uh, I'm sorry. Now, in GPAT, the answer is given as this one. In the answer key, the option is given as this one. But uh, let us understand the question. See, when RBCs are kept in isotonic solution, what happens? There will not be any movement of solute across RBC membrane. Isotonicity is because of this one. When there is isotonicity, there won't be any movement. Now, second one, the RBC shape and size will not change. See, this is red blood cell. And if there is no solute movement is there, the shape and size won't change. This is also true. Now, the next one. See, because osmotic pressure across the membrane is same, the solute will not cross across RBC membrane. In fact, the option, this one, option 1 and option 3, both of them are same. So, this is also true. So, the real option is all these above. But in the key, it is given as only this. You can, uh, some of the students might have contested this one. But the option is all these above. Understand the concept. Isotonicity means there won't be any solute movement. If solute movement is not there, there won't be any change in shape and size. This is literally same as option A. So all the above, all of these are the answer. Now, which of the following statements are correct regarding alkylating agent as anti-cancer agent? This is a tricky question, but understand this one. See, they get converted into highly nucleophilic anions and bind to nitrogen atom of guanine intercalating the DNA strands. I'll give you one example. See, most of the alkylating agents has got this structure. If a methyl group is there, it is melphalan. Now, what happens? Chlorine is a very good leaving group. It goes out along with electrons. So what happens? It generates a carbon with a positive charge. Why? The electrons are going away. A carbon with a positive charge is what? Carbocation. So this cation will be forming a bond with amine of guanine. Why? This is a positive charge and it, the electrons will be there. So there will be a bond formation. So literally what does it form? A nucleophilic cation. Now look at this. What is this? It says anion. They get converted to nucleophilic anion. No, they are getting converted to cations. They go and bind with this guanine. So this is not correct. Though it can combines with guanine, it is not anion. It is a cation. It is forming a cation. So this is wrong answer. Now the next one, cyclophosphamide busulfan belong to this class? True. They belong to alkylating agents. Next. They inhibit DNA synthesis by inhibiting DNA polymerase? No. Most of the antiviral drugs will cause DNA polymerase inhibition, not these anti-cancer drugs. Now, they inhibit DNA supercoiling by irreversibly inhibiting DNA topoisomerase enzyme. See, enzyme inhibitors are campothecins, topotecan and irinotecan, not alkylating agents. So, this is also not true. So, what is the only answer here? This one, option B is correct. Say, so only B is correct. This is what is the answer. So most of the students got confused with this A and B. So no, that is not. Now again, we need to match the following thing. Again, follow the same thing. See, warfarin, first one. See, this is warfarin toxicity can be treated by what? Warfarin is anticoagulant. So how do we treat it? By giving vitamin K. So one goes with R. Again, check the options. Only one is there. Bingo. This is this must be your answer. See, so easy it is it is to answer. So you need to have a particular strategy. Now, second one, carbon monoxide poisoning can be treated by administering oxygen. Now, cyanide poisoning can be treated by giving dicobalt editate. Now, nitrates can be treated by, nitrate poisoning can be treated by methylene blue and organophosphate 
pralidoxine. See, most of the students, again, they must be knowing about arcanophosphates can be treated by pralidoxine. Again, see, 5P is only present in one option. Even if you know that, you can give this correct answer. So this is easy. Ma match the following is always easy. If you know one perfect answer, if you are lucky enough to get this kind of options, you will get full marks. Now, blood grouping is basically possible because of the presence of antigens on RPA. Straight question, straight away. So option this is the correct one. On to the next one. Now, a neonate is suffering from icterus is neonatal jaundice. Jaundice occurs because of excess accumulation of bilirubin. Bilirubin. Now, intravenously administered with phenobarbital. The justification for this therapy. What is the problem? Bilirubin is accumulated. So, how it will get metabolized? It, metabol it is metabolized by glucuronyl transferase enzyme. Glucuronyl transferase enzyme. That enzyme activity is enhanced by phenobarbital because phenobarbital is an enzyme inducer. That is the reason why it is given here. Now let us find the options. So what are the options? Phenobarbital is short acting barbiturate and hence safe to induce sleep in neonates. No, the problem is you need to cure this, not put the kid to sleep, put the neonate to sleep. No, this is wrong. Phenobarbital suppresses bilirubin synthesis in neonate. No, it doesn't do this. Phenobarbital suppresses hepatic glucuronase transferase. If this is done, bilirubin concentration even more increases and it worsens the condition. So what is the answer? Phenobarbital induces hepatic glucuronyl transferase and increase the clearance of bilirubin. So this is the answer. Now, the next one. Now, which of the following could be the reasons for pharmacokinetic drug interactions? What is pharmacokinetic absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination? Now, interference with absorption. True, it is pharmacokinetic one. Changes in protein binding, changes distribution. True, this is true. Competition at receptor sites is related to dynamics but not kinetics. This is not. Now, interference with renal excretion, elimination. So, these three are given in A, B, D. So, these three are options. Let us see the options. C, A, B and D, only right. So, this is the right answer. So, these are all the uh, set of 10 pharmacology questions. I will be making further videos in this series. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, do subscribe and share.